Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's webinar, 5G's Evolution, TSN, REDCap, and Non-Terrestrial Networks, brought to you by Tech Online, Telet Centurion, and broadcast by Aspen Corps. I'm Colleen Heckman, and I'll be your moderator today. We have just a few brief announcements before we begin. First, the slides will advance automatically throughout the event. You may also download a copy of the slides by clicking on the green folder icon at the bottom of your screen. You can participate in our Q&A session by asking questions at any time during this webinar. Just type your question into the Q&A text area, locate it to the right of the presentation window, and then hit the submit button. At this time, we do recommend you disable your pop-up blockers. And at the end of the webinar, we'll ask you to complete our feedback form. Your feedback will provide us with valuable information on how we can improve future events. You can also launch the survey at any time by clicking on the red survey button at the bottom of your console. And if you experience any technical problems, please type your issue into the Q&A text area, hit the submit button, and we'll be glad to offer one-on-one -on -one assistance. And now, on to the presentation. 5G's evolution, TSN, REDCap, and non-terrestrial networks. Discussing today's topic is Safi Khan, Regional Product Marketing Director for Telet Centurion. Safi has over 20 years of wireless semiconductor industry experience. He's a seasoned professional in product marketing, product management, and engineering development. It's with great pleasure I hand things over to Safi to begin. Safi, take it away. Yes, hi, uh, Colleen. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, before we get started, I'll, uh, I'll just let you uh, conduct a poll. So uh, back to you before I get started. Oh. Excellent, great, thanks Safi. All right, to our audience, we have a polling question that we'd like you to participate in at the top of our, our program today, and then we'll have another one at the closing. So here we go. What is your experience with IoT projects? No experience, researching and planning one, looking for an IoT vendor, engage now in a global deployment project, or have concluded one or more projects. So go ahead and we'll let you complete the uh, hit the radio button that is appropriate for you. I also want to remind our audience that you can ask questions at any time during this webinar and we will be having our Q&A at the end. So that would be great. So we want to thank you folks for uh, participating in that. And then what I'll do is just hand this right over to Safi to take it away. Okay, great. Uh, thank you again. Um, so basically, I will be talking about uh, these three topics, uh, TSN, REDCap, and NTN. And all of these topics are really uh, connected in a way uh, where this word IoT has become very ubiquitous uh, with Internet of Things and uh, connectivity between these things. So these could be things in your home, which are smart appliances or smart devices. Uh, or it could be sensors that are in your smart home or smart building. And then from there, it could be even more advanced things like security, surveillance. Uh, it can be things for manufacturing or industrial. And uh, it could be other things in uh, areas where we haven't even ventured into yet, uh, more like uh, advanced you know, AR and VR uh, or other uh, fancier things like uh, uh, robots uh, talking to each other and going around autonomously uh, doing work. So basically, the market size is pretty big, and uh, this is this is the space that we play in, which is IoT, and and there's some big numbers uh, of the number of things that will be uh, connected. And uh, as you can see, the statement that Telet Centurion helps connect and manage 1 million new devices every week tells you the scale of things uh, that we are going to be talking about today. So let's uh, start with uh, just introducing our uh, topic first, uh, which is uh, you know why we chose these particular uh, three uh, areas. OK. And so TSN stands for Time Sensitive Networking. And what it means uh, in uh, reality is uh, networks that are bounded by time and latency. So you get end-to-end um, -end latency reduced. Uh, REDCap is a new technology by 5G. So it's an uh, acronym for reduced capability. That's REDCap. And then finally, NTN means non-terrestrial networks, which means satellite networks uh, working hand in hand in uh, coordination with networks on Earth or terrestrial networks. 
So that's what we will talk about today. Uh, a little bit about what uh, Telet Centurion does, in case uh, you're not familiar with our company. Uh, we basically have uh, an end-to-end -end solution that we provide in the Internet of Things. We are the leading Western IoT solutions provider and as well as a module vendor. So we build pre-certified uh, modules which are uh, cellular or uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, GNSS. So we play in the connectivity space and we are focused on uh, being a more of a consultant uh, for our customers and uh, advisory approach. So, you know, today there are demanding business critical, mission critical applications and uh, many of the customers don't want to get into the nitty gritty of how cellular networks work, how my module will work, what SIM card I should use, what is the best data plan, how can I ship globally my product. So that's where we come in. Uh, we are uniquely positioned to simplify and accelerate this uh, customer IoT journey that we call. And also a term you will hear is a digital transformation. So today's world, the factories, especially the manufacturing or any other operation in uh, retail or enterprise is going through this digital transformation where cloud connected services uh, give you more intelligence and more analytics and more insight. And of course you get data that you can analyze. So we help manage to collect that data and analyze that data at the edge and that makes uh, business operations more efficient and uh, you know it helps the bottom line at the end of the day. So turnkey solutions, uh, innovative modules, uh, and of course reliable global connectivity. We also pro provide a Telet SIM card that can uh, be a global SIM that you can put in your IoT product uh, or even enable it virtually through eSIM. And so we offer a lot of services beyond just providing the hardware of the modules. So we are creating value for our customers who are looking for more than just another module vendor and to help with their IoT uh, business. So we are a trusted partner because we are a Western supply chain and uh, we um, solve the end-to-end -end, uh, pain points and the you know issues that the customers have at the end of the day, it's basically to reduce the total cost of ownership uh, of their solution. And so that's a little bit about ourselves. Uh, we are the leaders in our technology area and we are a global company. Our headquarters is based in Irvine, California and uh, operations and R&D uh, spread out throughout uh, many countries. So with that, uh, let's get started with our main topics. So the first one that I will touch is uh, TSN or time sensitive networking. And so let's get into this one and see what this is all about. Okay, so you all know that 5G is the latest uh, cellular standard and the initial launches of 5G were in the area of uh, mobile broadband and they focused a little bit on new spectrum and wider bandwidths, which means you could have much down, much faster download and upload speeds compared to 4G networks. Now, 5G uh, also has many, many other aspects in the standard. Some of them are uh, have to do with uh, improving the latency of the network, as well as scalability, where a device can be a super high-speed device, which is the mobile broadband, or it can be a lower category device, which we will talk about, red cap. But across the whole spectrum of devices, the uh, underlying technology has been upgraded to allow for a low latency operation end to end. And so uh, 5G introduces a concept, uh, it's a mouthful acronym called URLLC, and that stands for ultra reliable low latency communications. And the time sensitive network uh, TSN uh, feature is part of that uh, URLLC umbrella. So these standards, the 82.1QXX uh, and also 82.1AS, these are new network standards for time critical services. 
So TCS is time critical service. And what it does is it allows you to have a bounded latency. And now this is, of course, not something new. This has been around in wired networks. But today what we are talking about is that we are also with this technology able to offer a similar time bounded service over wireless networks. So why would you think that is important? It is important because many verticals like enterprises, industry 4.0 and manufacturing, uh, they can benefit from this uh, protocol over wireless networks because of that digital transformation I talked about earlier. So many uh, uh, machines that you might see in a typical factory floor, uh, as shown on the picture on the right, they uh, consist of these uh, robots which are uh, working on producing goods. Now, in the traditional sense, they were fixed robots and they had wired connectivity. So imagine now in the next uh, vision of a modern factory, the robot itself is mobile and it's able to move around and uh, how do you control it? And how do you give it instructions? You give them through 5G. And that's where 5G TSN comes in. So it's the integration between wired and wireless ethernet networks. So it's just the robot thinks it's still getting an ethernet frame or a data packet in a latency sensitive way, but it doesn't know that it's coming over a wireless network. And that's the beauty of TSN where 5G TSN uh, coexists with non-TSN and TSN frames. So for example, if you have, let's say a feature inside the robot where for anything going wrong or emergency shutdown, you have to react very, very quickly. So what you would do is you would have the ability to shut down the robot uh, sent over a TSN network. And that way it has preemptive priority over other data packets which are coming in, which are non-TSN. So non-TSN frames, for example, could be sent on best effort, which means, okay, if there is a slot to send data, it will check if I have a TSN frame to send. And so it will send that on a higher quality of service. So it will be sent first. And also it will, uh, it will count the time uh, to make sure that the uh, distribution of the clock is uh, such a way that uh, it, it gets completed uh, in a guaranteed uh, time window. And as, as shown here, there are um, control networks with sensors, there's industrial automation, manufacturing I mentioned, video applications. These are applications that can uh, uh, make use of TSN networks. AGV stands for Automated Guided Vehicle and AMR is a automated, automated uh, autonomous mobile robot. So these are the new entities in a modern factory that uh, go around or even in a warehouse. Now they're mobile, they're 5G connected, and they are doing uh, a lot of the autonomous automation work. So moving a little bit further deeper into the architecture, uh, uh, I promise I won't go become too technical but uh, Industry 4.0 depends on a modern mission critical low latency network. So as I was saying, uh, they want to improve the efficiency, they want higher safety standards, higher reliability standards, and of course, more productivity. How do you get more productivity? You get it through automation. You let the machines do repetitive tasks at a faster rate than humans. And so that's where uh, these machines like AGVs and AMRs uh, and also a lot of smart sensors, uh, they all talk to each other and they all want to talk to each other over a wireless network like 5G uh, with high speed, reliable connectivity. Uh, but also at the same time, they want uh, to provide the traditional ethernet networks that have improved over time and matured. And so uh, this can uh, this can be done in a cellular technology like 5G because of URLLC, the low latency standard. And that is exactly where TSN comes in and offers ultra low uh, latency with high reliability. So what that does is it reduces the jitter between 
the transactions, meaning from one transaction to the next in millions of transactions, all of them get completed in the same amount of time. It's not like one operation will take some, let's say, few milliseconds, but the next operation takes 10 times that. So that is what gets removed from the system. And so you have more predictable operation and uh, large sensor network in a factory can then operate synchronously. And as shown in the graph here, uh, Ethernet with best effort could take forever. For example, let's say there is a large file that has to be transferred. And if it starts taking up all the bandwidth, then the time sensitive network or the critical packets that have to be sent, uh, if the system is not able to, to preempt that big file download uh, and, and insert the TSN frames, then you will lose that uh, mission critical ability. So that's where uh, TSN will come in and uh, offer that. Now here on this uh, picture, let's take a look at uh, typical machines in a smart factory that can leverage the 5G wireless TSN networks. And so, as I said earlier, there is uh, smarts built into every little machine now. So even the machines that build the products those machines themselves are uh, fully connected and the operation center can uh, monitor their health. They can do predictable uh, or predictive maintenance on them. Uh, they can see uh, if anything is going wrong or if it's working at peak efficiency. So there's many, many sensors uh, on a machine that all are uh, either sending data or collecting some data at any given time. Moving over uh, to the right side, so autonomous mobile robots are the new thing where they will uh, go to a warehouse, pick a box, bring it back to where the manufacturing needs to be done so that the parts can be assembled and uh, built into a final product. So AMRs are also uh, wirelessly connected. Uh, keep going. So multiple handheld terminals. So uh, you know you could have a rugged tablet which is able to withstand vibration and shock uh, thrown around in the factory environment, which is harsh. And uh, so it has 5G inside. And if you want uh, high reliability 5G connectivity for your workforce that need uh, to look at uh, the state of the current operations through their tablet. So that also needs uh, 5G connectivity. And then finally, the AGV, automated guided vehicle, these are the ones which are on the track in the roof. They have a whole uh, conveyor belt and track where these uh, vehicles also uh, run around, but on a predetermined track. So essentially what we are trying to convey as a message is that the traditional wired ethernet networks, they must be upgraded to modern flexible wireless 5G TSN networks for the smart factory. So hopefully that explains why TSN in 5G is so important uh, because you can, you can have a 5G network or you, you can even have a 4G network, but the demands of the factory uh, will not be met until and unless you can replicate uh, Ethernet uh, low latency performance also on the wireless side. So that's <clears throat> basically a little bit about uh, TSN networks. And uh, why 5G plus TSN is a good match? Uh, it is because the network features are a perfect match for TSN uh, because they complement each other so well. They solve some of the most important challenges in today's hyper-connected data-driven smart factories. You have high bandwidth of 5G, uh, you have higher data rates and it's wireless and it's multi-server, multi-service bearing, which means uh, high quality or high QoS quality of service, high demanding traffic can be sent as a separate service on the same channel. And the lower latency or best effort traffic can then be sent uh, in addition to that. Uh, and the signaling in the network takes care of uh, separating the TSN packets from the non-TSN packets. And on the other side, what do TSN uh, networks require? They require time synchronization, uh, deterministic transmission, 
and compatible to Ethernet so that all the existing infrastructure can be leveraged and the same multi-service bearing. So these two go hand in hand to provide and produce a deterministic network which is integrating uh, the wireless and the wired side of things. Okay, so we spent some time on TSN and uh, now let's switch gears and talk about 5G Redcap for a little while. So these, these topics are all connected because they are all serving that Internet of Things umbrella, IoT. So what is 5G Redcap? So let's talk about uh, the standard process. Now, I did mention in the beginning that the first uh, wave of 5G products was the uh, enhanced mobile broadband or high-speed 5G products. So that will be the green stripe on the lower, on the bottom of the screen. So that's uh, basically um, release 16 and even below that, the gray one, release 15. Uh, it seems it was only yesterday, but it has been quite a few years since we launched 5G now. So today, the release 16 products are high bandwidth and high power consumption and also high cost. So you get very, very high multi gigabit per second download speeds and upload speeds. So imagine a module that we build with uh, 5G inside it, mobile broadband. It can basically uh, provide a very high broadband connection for any other application or service. So you're talking about uh, in good conditions and with good spectrum, you can easily reach two, three, up to four gigabits per second download speed, as well as one, two gigabits per second uplink speed. So the device can do uplink and downlink traffic in very, very high speed. But with that comes complexity and cost and power consumption. And uh, you need four antennas. You need, uh, uh, maybe if it's battery operated, you need a very big battery, but mostly it's powered applications. So then, <clears throat> why REDCap? So basically, you want all the benefits of 5G, which is the new network, but you want them in a smaller, simpler form factor. And so that's the middle row, the release 17, the uh, blue one. And so release 17 of the 3GPP standard introduces a new device class, and it's called uh, 5G NR REDCap. So REDCap is the acronym for reduced capability. So instead of four antennas for the broadband, in REDCap you have one or two antennas only. And then the 5G could leverage a very wide bandwidth, meaning the if you think of a highway, it could have many, many lanes for traffic. So that's how you get the speed. But in REDCap, you have only one lane of 20 megahertz channel, and that's limited. It's actually similar to 4G, so it's 20 megahertz, and you're not able to combine the carriers, meaning there is no carrier aggregation. So your speeds come down to about uh, 150 to 200 megabits downlink and 50 to 100 megabits uplink, which is very decent speeds for many applications, but it's not the super high mobile broadband speeds. And then the network has to be 5G only, so there is no, um, signaling shared with 4G. So 5G uh, devices are going to operate on a 5G standalone network, and there will be a 4G fallback so that initially when 5G is not deployed everywhere, the device can still operate. If it doesn't find a 5G signal, it will uh, fall back to 4G. And uh, <clears throat> there is some other uh, optional features in the standard. So uh, it's similar to um, LTE, and we will get into that. So, uh, and, and of course, it has some power saving features. So compared to the mobile broadband, uh, the red cap devices will be uh, much lower power in terms of power consumption. So they can be mounted in more and more battery operated uh, scenarios. And while we are talking about red cap, I might as well also mention that there is a new standard number, a release 18, that is being worked on, uh, which will be completed next year. And they have also defined a further new class of devices called E-REDCap. So it's called Enhanced REDCap. 
and it will be even less complexity, less lower cost, and the bandwidth will be even less than 20 megahertz. It will probably be closer to five, and it will have a much better power profile than even today's red cap. So with all of this background, let's take a look at how red cap, uh, what does it, what does it replace? So here on this chart, we are showing uh, how the technologies evolved over time. And so in 4G LTE, we have LTE CAT1 and CAT4. These are the mid-speed IoT devices, and they range from uh, 10 to 150 megabits downlink and 5 to 50 megabits uplink. That's CAT1 and CAT4. So when REDCap is introduced now and moving forward, it is similar speeds as the LTE CAT4 and CAT1. So the in the release 17 red cap, the first one coming out, is closer to CAT4 speed. And then the new one, the enhanced red cap, will be closer to CAT1 speed. So this is where the positioning is for these technologies. Now, where does it fit in in terms of real, uh, real world use cases? Uh, as shown here, these are the three famous pillars of 5G, the top one, the left, and the right. Top one is the enhanced mobile broadband. So that's the highest throughput and high speed. Then on the left is energy efficient, uh, low power network devices for massive machine type communications. Uh, this will be fulfilled by um, CATM and NB-IoT uh, devices, which are called narrow band devices. And then on the right is the low latency. We touched on this in the TSN section already. So 5G offers much lower, uh, much lower latency, much higher with higher reliability, uh, all end-to-end -end built into the network. So with all of this, the red cap comes and fills the gap in the middle. So the speed is not as high as mobile broadband, but the latency features can be leveraged fully in red cap, and the energy efficiency also can be fully leveraged especially in the release 18 red cap, which will be uh, further in the future. And today, uh, what is coming out first is the red cap, which is shown on the right side, which is the initial release 17. And the sweet spot is the things shown here, as well as many other things that we haven't thought of yet. So industrial cameras, you know, machinery, industrial sensors, alarms, and, and health and medical applications. So all of these can benefit from uh, REDCap as a new technology. Now, uh, we also want to show how the different class of cellular devices map to different applications. So starting from the bottom to the top, uh, the, the two in the bottom called LTE-M and 5G-M MTC, as you can see, they show a battery which is full. So they are the best applications for low power. And as you move upwards, you see the battery is not so good, which means they are consuming a little bit more battery. And then the top ones are really very high speed and high throughput. So they need uh, constant power from the wall or very big batteries. But at the same time, coming back down, the uh, LTE M and BIOT and the MMTC, these technologies which are good in battery, they are not so good in terms of uh, speed. So if you look, they have uh, low speed applications, but they're very good at it. So if you have a metering and sensing or asset tracking application, these are very useful. You can measure uh, some uh, quantity and then you can wake up occasionally and send messages back to the network. Uh, you can do some location tracking and send the location of a tracker and things like that. Then if you move up to the middle, you see LTE CAT4, CAT1, and then evolving into 5G NR red cap and E red cap. And so here, now you're calling it mid-speed. So you can do more monitoring and control and more alerts and supervision. And you can see more uh, cloud connected uh, activity in the graphic instead of a message centric. So rather than waking up and sending a message, uh, what happens in REDCap is 
this uh, persistent connectivity and having this ability to go uh, check two-way traffic uh, constantly. So this could be alerts, uh, reporting a data stream, uh, frequent activities uh, like you know, images or video from a camera comes to mind, uh, transactions capturing data. So that's the sweet spot for REDCap where um, we can apply uh, you know, to IP traffic, uh, more cloud connectivity, and so on. So that is the evolution of LTE Cat1, Cat4, and in the shape of 5G NR REDCap, and it can leverage and bring a lot of the uh, abilities of the 5G network in a cost-effective, low-power, uh, new device class. So wrapping up on the red cap, uh, Telit Centurion is leading the industry in 5G. Uh, we are aligned with the launch of 5G red cap networks uh, by all the major carriers in uh, developed markets like North America, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, so rest of the world, uh, especially Europe uh, and APAC, uh, not as advanced on the red cap, uh, but eventually it will happen in those markets as well. And the big focus is uh, the, the carriers in the North America region. And we at MWC um, uh, in uh, uh, Las Vegas in September, we made a press release to announce our uh, red cap products, uh, one, you know, LGA form factor and also M.2 form factor, data card form factor. You can go on our website and check out this uh, press release that we have uh, showcasing and highlighting all the features of REDCap. All right, so we have now covered two out of the three topics. And uh, one more slide on the product itself before we wrap up, actually. So what is our REDCap product look like? Uh, it is based on the Qualcomm uh, SDX35 uh, chipset. And we are having uh, global SKUs and also regional SKUs for full design flexibility. We have capability to do embedded processing in the modules using our SDK, which is called App Zone. Uh, it is very secure, secure by design. So these uh, modules are uh, secured by uh, many, many uh, internal processes to prevent any cyber uh, attacks and flexible connectivity solutions with the Telit Next network when the data plans with uh, our Telit SIM or connectivity activation to remotely activate the SIM. Uh, and many applications as shown here for uh, REDCap like health, security panels, surveillance, uh, telematics and asset tracking, and also fixed wireless access uh, and routers and gateways. Uh, if you look at the features, uh, it will be the 5G standalone with LTE fallback and uh, two form factors, the LG and uh, M.2, global and regional. It also has embedded uh, positioning, GNSS, dual frequency. It will support voice both on LTE and on uh, 5G and R. Uh, App Zone and eSIM and Next, I mentioned already. Uh, One Edge is our platform to manage the devices. And we also support secure boot. So basically only assigned encrypted uh, authentic image is allowed to be updated to the module in the field. So this is our 5G REDCap device. And that concludes the REDCap section. Okay, so now in the last section, last but not least, let's talk about another new technology called non-terrestrial networks or NTN in other words. So NTN is, as I said in the beginning of the webinar, non-terrestrial networks is a new technology to enable satellite communications uh, coupled with the terrestrial 5G uh, networks on the ground. And so non-terrestrial just means that it's not a 5G network on the ground. It's your device is talking to a satellite uh, to be able to offer some connectivity in the case of moving out of cellular coverage. So the big benefit here 
is that the satellite can provide global coverage, especially outdoors. For example, if you think of remote sites or uh, driving in a truck, uh, things that are being tracked, uh, if they can stay connected when they are out of cellular coverage, then that's where NTN will come in. Uh, so shown here is the expected uh, adoption of NTN. NTN is initially <clears throat> introduced in release 17, the same release as the one that introduced uh, 5G RedCap that we just talked about. And there will be an, <clears throat> excuse me, enhancement in uh, 5G NTN in release 18. So here, <clears throat> TN is terrestrial network and NTN is the non-terrestrial network. Uh, there will be alignment and deployment between these networks. So there are uh, two versions of NTN, which we will cover. One is the um, IoT small data uh, flavor of NTN. And then the next one will be the higher data version of NTN. And there will be interworking between the two networks. You can also have a private network, which is shown on the bottom, where you have the narrowband IoT and LTEM devices of today, uh, which can then be upgraded on their uh, firmware to be able to directly talk to the satellite and offer some small IoT data services. And so these could be um, uh, interesting and, and uh, attractive because you can take the existing products and make some changes to them to make them NTN capable. And so there are already some proprietary solutions uh, already out there, uh, but again, they are not interoperable uh, to the 3GPP standard. So the existing infrastructure is taking care of this by using the satellites, but it's a uh, private or proprietary traditional uh, communications. So it's not scalable to the level that 3GPP will make it in the coming years because of being standardized. So here are some NTN use cases which are very useful to understand that imagine if you have a product that needs connectivity for a mission critical operation. And in these cases, you can imagine now that if you are especially uh, outdoors and you can see a satellite in the sky, then you have, it opens up more uh, reliable uh, and more constantly connected uh, uh, service and user experience. So automotive services, autonomous vehicles, of course, uh, logistics and uh, tracking and tracing, public services, first responder, disaster relief. So of course, if you have a fire in a region where there is no cell coverage, this could be very useful for first responders. Critical remote infrastructure monitoring, uh, environmental monitoring and farming, smart energy. So of course you have miles and miles of electricity uh, and you have, uh, you can then uh, upgrade these networks to have devices that can send uh, data uh, because they're all outdoor and they can see the satellite. Uh, then moving to the right side, enhanced mobile telephony service, continuity for existing users. So you have seen the announcement from uh, Apple iPhone. They now have emergency SOS service through a satellite provider. So of course, when you're hiking, let's say in a remote area and you have an injury, uh, God forbid, then you can um, dial up the satellite on your uh, phone. And so, so, and railway aviation, mining, all of these um, are very, very good use cases for NTN. So NTN will play a big role in the next few years in addressing these markets with the new technology. So again, uh, digging deeper into it without getting too technical, uh, Telit as uh, Telit Centurion as a company is working on NTN modules. Uh, some of these will be our existing products, which will be adapted to enable the NTN, and others will be new products that we are developing to offer NTN. Uh, how it works, uh, it's basically 3GPP um, standards group has defined a standard way of letting the device talk to a terrestrial network and then at the same time also start talking to the 
uh, satellite directly and then uh, do a handover between a terrestrial service and a satellite service. So in the in the past, there were separate technologies and now it is in integrated technology uh, in this year and in the initial rollouts. But, you know, as shown in the graph in in, let's say, five to seven more years, this could become so uh, seamless that you wouldn't know whether you are talking to uh, your cell tower next to you in your uh, town, or you're talking to a satellite which is uh, thousands of miles away. Uh, you wouldn't know the difference and it would be a seamless service. So you'll just have a better user experience in terms of connectivity and uh, uh, not having the outage that sometimes we we have in driving around, for example. Uh, so we are, uh, like I said, preparing our modules already. We're also playing an active role in the NTN standardization process uh, in the 3GPP. We have a presence there. And of course, uh, Telet Centurion has partnership with uh, the key technology pioneers like Thales Group, uh, Alenia Space. So they are very big into providing the satellite technology. And of course, engagement in uh, technology projects such as 6G NTN. So like I said, 2030 shown on the graph, uh, there is work that will continue and eventually the 5G will then be uh, transforming into 6G and that's where they'll bring in even more enhanced services. NTN uh, is providing an additional network layer. This is just showing you uh, you remember that three pyramid diagram I showed for red cap that's shown on the bottom here. So of course, see the blue triangle shows the initial focus and the green. So those are high, you know, blue is the mobile broadband. Green is the very low power NB-IoT and CAT-M sensors, which are 5G ready. Uh, and then of course, red cap was the middle and then URLLC was the right one. Now, if you look at the second one, you see the big triangle. So actually NTN satellite service uh, affects all of these products and can be an overlay to complement the service. And uh, <clears throat> here it says 5G compliant NTN with direct access with LEO. So LEO is low earth orbit, uh, good latency performance. And I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, with spectrum below 7 gigahertz hardware, cost of device is marginally increased, but narrow band and wide band is supported. So what it means really is NTN can be turned on immediately with the today's narrow band products because the satellite frequency, frequencies at which the satellites are operating uh, in the initial use cases uh, are, are the same frequencies as the terrestrial ones. And so with uh, some modification, the existing hardware can talk to the satellite. And that's what everybody, including Telet, is working on. And so initial focus uh, will be uh, bringing machine type communications and eventually when they roll out satellite service in the lower orbits, we can even do some uh, broadband services. Now, of course, uh, satellites are very, very far away. And so the signal is very, very weak and you want to be able to look at it um, and, and and decode the signal with the lowest power possible. So there are some technical challenges. Uh, geo means geostationary, it's far away. And so you need maybe a special uh, terminal to, to get the high throughput. But that doesn't mean that you can use the geo for IoT use cases with low data rate. And that's exactly what's happening. So instead of trying to uh, get a very high speed terrest uh, satellite connection uh, through GEO, uh, we will wait for LEO, which is low Earth orbit uh, satellites, uh, or MEO, which is middle uh, Earth orbit, to get the more broadband speeds. Um, one megabits outdoor, for example. Um, but of course, the challenges are that the, the lower orbit and the middle orbit as satellites cannot cover the globe like a GEO can. And so they have to have a much more bigger constellation of satellites which are constantly uh, moving around. And so you have uh, Doppler effects and things like that. Uh, again, mobility between uh, handoffs is, is a challenge uh, and it will be improved in release 18. 
Uh, and of course, you need to know where you are with the GPS position. So coming to the end, um, we've provided this table for some um, easy decoding of uh, what is what. So let's look at it from the left column. So the targeted terminals, uh, you have two types. You have a direct connectivity or you have indirect, and that's separated through the frequency 7 versus 10 gigahertz. And so the terminal can be an IoT device or it can be a handset. Like I said, the iPhone example and the Android phones. Uh, the It could be a car or drone mounted device. Uh, then in the service, you can have narrowband service, which is easy to do with geo. Uh, and it's hundreds of kilobits, so not very high data rate, but gives you that ability to stay connected for that mission critical message that you want to send. Uh, on the handset side, you can have wideband uh, with few megabits per second service once you consider the low and middle Earth orbit satellites. On the orbit, the GEO provides the best coverage, uh, but is uh, higher latency, but if you can tolerate the latency, then it, it gives you connectivity. And then the 3GPP radio interface is the NB-IoT, uh, CAD-M, uh, not even CAD-M, but basically NB-IoT 4G, which is uh, what can talk to the satellite and tolerate the latency. For the uh, broadband devices, it will be 5G new radio, so it will be a release 17 or 18 uh, device that will be able, that will be NTN capable. And the example applications are utilities, smart grids, water distribution, oil and gas, agriculture. These are only some. Uh, and then for the handset or uh, car mounted device, it's basically automotive, public safety, utilities, uh, agriculture and defense. And then on the indirect uh, connectivity, they would need a special terminal uh, like VSAT uh, to basically um, uh, give you that um, coverage from the very far away satellite for broadband service. So now if you have this very small aperture terminal, which is VSAT, it's a special terminal that can actually decode the satellite from such a far away it, with a higher gain. So you actually then get broadband hundreds of megabits speed. And this is a more of a similar speed as a terrestrial one. Uh, so eventually that's the idea, is to have a telco type backhaul service, IPTV service, satellite news gathering, uh, transport, and so on. So basically 3GPP technology applicable for all satellite networks can be any orbit, any band, any device, any service. So that's the final vision. Okay, so uh, we have wrapped up all three subjects and uh, I will hand it back to Colleen from here to take another poll. Thank you, thank you, Safi. That was an excellent presentation. To our audience, we do have another poll for you to take here right before we go into our Q&A. So if you would, please go ahead and uh, hit the radio button if you'd like. Are you interested in receiving more information from a member of our team here? So yes or no, would be uh, glad to follow up with you there. So let's go into the Q&A. To our audience, if you haven't done so already, please type your question into the Q&A text area, hit the submit button. We'll get to as many questions as we can today in the time we have left. If we don't get to your individual question, someone will get back to you after the program is over. So Safi, I'll let you take a sip of water, but we're gonna jump right into these questions for you. Okay, so first question asks, does any of Telet Centurion's 5G products support time-sensitive network features? Yes, it does, and that is a great question. So if you go to our website, um, we have uh, products for 5G that do. Um, we are bringing out uh, TSN in the FN990 uh, product. So this, uh, this is a M.2 data card that has, um, uh, it's based on the Qualcomm chipset SDX62 and also SDX65. Uh, these are enhanced mobile broadband products and uh, they are the latest uh, release 16 technology for 5G. And so these uh, products are going to offer, uh, you know, very high speed. So they're not a red cap uh, today, available today. So these are in mass production now. They have been um, fully certified on uh, global um, MNOs and uh, they can be deployed uh, immediately. 
but the TSN feature and the, the basically the the Ethernet uh, low latency uh, part of the 5G is uh, being developed, and uh, basically it's uh, it's going to be updated uh, on the firmware uh, as soon as it's ready. So that's the one that we do have uh, TSN uh, coming out pretty soon. Excellent, thank you. Safi, moving quickly along here, we've got our next question. When will 5G RedCap networks become commercially available and in which markets? Okay, uh, we touched upon that a little bit, um, but let me uh, explain a little bit further. So as I said, release 17 RedCap, uh, the, the standard was standardized already. So now we do have uh, you know, confidence that uh, uh, chipsets have been announced and are uh, coming out and Qualcomm is leading the uh, the way for the chipset. So they have announced the SDX35, and this is the first red cap uh, capable chipset. And uh, I showed a slide where we are uh, developing uh, modules, uh, both LGA and M.2, based on the SDX35. Now, as far as the red cap adoption, uh, that is going to happen in 2024 and 25. So we are coming to the end of 23, we are in fourth quarter, and the major MNOs in North America, they are, what they first do is uh, chipset certification and testing. So basically, um, you know, the, the, the infrastructure equipment from the big vendors has to be able to talk to the chipset and they flush out all the interoperability issues uh, between the chipset and talking to the network and then the network talking back to the chipset. And then the module certifications, uh, we build the module from the chipset and then we, the so module certifications uh, will start early 2024, uh, followed by, you know, commercial deployments earliest by mid 24 to early 25. So uh, red cap networks will be able to accept new devices starting in the second half of next year, uh, but fully uh, launched by uh, 2025 timeframe. Uh, so I think that that would be the right time uh, to look at, um, you know, how uh, we want to um, uh, align that with, let's say, you want to build a new product, um, you want to wait until the market has matured uh, I would say realistically 2025 to 26 would be the right time frame. But as these uh, things uh, mature, um, I think uh, it will be uh, better to wait a while before this technology is mature and you have the ecosystem uh, fully developed and uh, the network um, is uh, able to offer a, a more reliable and ubiquitous coverage uh, in, in that sense. Because if you deploy too early, what can happen is that your device will mostly be operating on the 4G mode and it will not find the 5G red cap signal. So uh, you, you want to wait until the red cap benefits uh, are available and uh, your device has enough uh, areas where 5G red cap has been deployed um, where you want to um, spread out your your deployments. So 2024 will be the year for testing, for certifications, for preparing the network. And then 25 is when the network service will be launched. Uh, the question also asked about the market. So I think so what we have done is we have gathered and uh, talked to all the MNOs globally, because this is the space where we talk to them uh, regularly. So North America, all the three major operators are definitely moving forward with the red cap plans. Uh, rest of the world is a little bit behind. Uh, we know that Australia, there is uh, some operators who are thinking of red cap by 24 timeframe. Uh, right now in Korea, Japan, and all of Europe, there is no firm commitments yet for deployment of uh, red cap. And then uh, China has uh, some trials in 24, and they will also launch commercially by uh, 25. So that's kind of the landscape uh, for, for RedCap. 
Excellent. Thank you. Sounds like we might have to have a follow-up webinar next year for some of that. Sure. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, excellent. All right. That sounds great. Um, so, Safi, it looks like I do have time for just one more question. So, to our audience, if we didn't get to your individual questions, someone will get back to you after the program. So, let's get this final one in here. Uh, so, it says, how will the NTN services be different when geosatellites are used versus LEO MEO satellites? Okay. Yes. I think that was um, that is one of the key uh, things to understand, um, you know, NTN is a broad umbrella. It talks about uh, all sorts of satellite services. Uh, so, you know, let's 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 look at this uh, in this way. So, the the uh, highest satellite is called geostationary, so geostas satellite. Now, it is so far away that um, it can see the whole Earth at least uh, with three satellites. You can cover the whole Earth. So, let's say North America. All you need is one big satellite that is its beam can cover the whole United States. And so with that one satellite, you can have coverage for the whole country. So this, because it's so far away and because the the terminals are not satellite terminals, these are actual cellular devices. You cannot have that big antenna or that big dish that you usually see in your home so you have to make do with a very small antenna on your, let's say, IoT device, uh, which is, uh, you know, an NB IoT device, narrowband. And it's talking to a satellite which is thousands of miles away. So what happens is that you're limited to the narrowband IoT service. So that's important that the NTN initial deployments will provide IoT type service, NB IoT, few kilobits per second uh, service. So there is pluses and minuses. So it's not a broadband service. So you can't do a lot of video or um, high, high data rate applications, uh, things like that. But it is very good for trackers, asset tracking or monitoring. And so NB IoT devices like sensors or uh, monitoring stations, which are in remote areas, they will be the first ones to leverage the geo uh, version of uh, NTN. Then we have other players who have the uh, satellite constellations which are much lower in orbit and they are more in constellation so th because they can't cover the whole earth. So they are deploying more of these satellites and they are orbiting the earth. They're not stationary, they are actually orbiting which means that your device can see up to two or three satellites at any given time, but they pass by. So when they pass by, you have a time window when you can see them and get the signal. But the processing needs to happen more, you need more powerful processing uh, to be able to uh, uh, demodulate the signal from uh, MEO and LEO, uh, sorry, MEO uh, and LEO satellites, lower and middle Earth orbit. But the benefit is that because there are so many of these satellites and because they're much closer to the Earth, you can uh, get higher data rates. So that will be the broadband NTN service, which will come later. And there are different players who are targeting Geo versus Leo and Mio. So initial deployments are Geo. Eventually, it will also translate to Mio and Leo. And then, of course, like I said, that seamless service where your device can hop back and forth, especially like the handover in mobile scenarios will be possible with release 18 onwards. Uh, so that's that's the idea uh, behind NTN. Hopefully that answers the question. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Safi. And thank you for an excellent presentation and Q&A. To our audience, for more information related to today's webinar, please visit any of the resource links available in your green folder icon at the bottom of your screen. Within the next 24 hours, you will receive a personalized follow-up email with details and a link to today's presentation on demand. So thank you for attending today's webinar, 5G's Evolution, TSN, REDCap, and Non-Terrestrial Networks. Brought to you by Tech Online, Telets and Terion. This webinar is copyright 2023 by Aspen Core. The presentation materials are owned by or copyright by Tech Online and Telets and Terion. And the individual speaker is solely responsible for his content and opinion. On behalf of our guests and Telets and Terion, I'm Colleen Heckman. Thank you for your time and have a great day.